Hi, welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. I'm Aurora Lung from Danville, California. In my last video, I upgraded this printer to a direct drive extruder. You can do this upgrade to an Ender 3, CR10, or almost any FDM printer. But the problem is, the direct drive extruder will add more weight to the x-axis. So, I also have to upgrade this printer to a dual z-axis to support this side of the gantry, which should solve the problem. Normally, I can just buy an upgrade kit for around $50. For me and many other 3D printer users and electronic hobbyists, we always have a lot of different parts like these boxes behind me. There are screws, wires, connectors, and all kinds of parts. Considering a new entry-level 3D printer costs less than $200. Personally, I don't want to spend $50 to buy a kit that we just need one or two parts from. In my last video, I also purchased an Ender 3 Direct Extruder Upgrade Kit to compare it to my DIY version. It was on sale, so it only cost $33. So now, I have a spare stepper motor from the original extruder. Besides that, I also have some spare screws, cables, and couplers. So I decided to just buy the parts I needed and 3D print the rest. Here are the items we need for this upgrade. 1. The stepper motor and cable. This set costs $12. It includes the stepper motor, the cable, M3 screws, and T-nuts. 2. One T8 lead screw. It must be the same as the existing one. Most stock printers come with an 8mm, 4 start, and 2mm pitch lead screw. This is the most common one you can get. This set of two costs $14.99, which is $7.50 each. Three, a five millimeter to eight millimeter coupler to connect the stepper and the lead screw, which costs $9 for two, which is $4.50 each. Four, a support back plate to mount the lead screw, which can be 3D printed. Five, a stepper motor mount, which can also be 3D printed. Six, three long M5 screws for the support plate, as the length of the original screws may become too short to mount the back plate. It would cost just $10 to get 50 of them, which is around 20 cents each. Finally, three M5 aluminum spacers to provide some clearance between the support plate and the wheels. This will cost around $8.50 for 10 pieces, which is $2.50 for three spacers. If you have none of these items on hand and need to buy all of them, the upgrade should cost you around $28. If you already have some of them, it should cost $20 or less. Now, I have all the parts I need except the parts we're going to 3D print. Let's start with printing the back plate for this lead screw. If you are using an Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, V2, or CR10, you can easily find some designs on Thingiverse. I link some of the commonly used ones below. For this printer, as this front plate was from the AlphaWise U30 Pro, the screw holes are slightly different from the Ender 3. I have to make a back plate using Fusion 360. Measure the distance between these three screw holes and draw a simple sketch using Fusion 360 and print it. I also uploaded this file on Thingiverse. If you are using an Alpha Wise or a longer 3D printer, this mount should fit most of them. Next, we need to print the stepper motor mount. I found this design from Kyle RL, and it's very simple and functional. You just need two M3 screws and T-nuts to mount it to the frame. The $12 stepper motor and cable kit also came with some M3 screws and T-nuts, so you can use those to mount the stepper motor. 
Okay, we now have everything ready. We can start by installing the new stepper motor. For the Ender 3, you need to relocate the power supply unit somewhere else. You can print this mount design by MTRAX from Thingiverse. It doesn't require if the power supply unit of your printer is inside the base or somewhere else. I printed a CR10-like enclosure for this printer and put the power supply and motherboard inside. I left it unscrewed so I can easily do mods and upgrades. After you have relocated the power supply, you can add the backplate to the gantry. As you can see, the original screw is not long enough to mount the backplate. This is why we need these three long M5 screws. Just remove these three nuts. You can easily replace these two screws with the longer ones. But for this one, you need to remove the x-axis from the frame in order to slide it out. To make it easier, I would just remove two screws under the gantry so we can have some extra space. Then, we can replace the screws with some longer 45mm screws, put it back together, and add spaces between the wheel and the new back plate. Reuse the nuts and put them on the 3D printed back plate. Since the position of the wheels may be different than before, we need to make sure they are tightened to the aluminum extrusion, but not too tight. None of them should spin alone. Adjust the knob if necessary. After that, we can put the screws of the gantry back at the bottom and tighten them. Next, we can mount the stepper motor at the bottom of the gantry, just like the other side, using the screws that came with the stepper motor set. Connect the cable to the second Z-axis connector on the motherboard. Most motherboards have two Z-axis connectors. If you don't have one, you may need a splitter cable to connect both stepper motors to the same connector. Okay, let's put the coupler on the motor and tighten it as much as you can. I have tried different types of couplers. This one is too flexible and has caused some layer bending issues. This one is alright, but I like this one best. It's rigid and works pretty well. I use them on all of my printers. Before we can add the new lead screw, we need to secure the nut on the plate. You can use the one that came with the lead screw, but I also purchased a set of anti-backlash nuts. This is optional. It won't affect the print quality at all, unless you prefer to enable the Z hop when retraction setting in your slicer. Use the two M3 screws and nuts that came with the stepper motor set to secure the lead screw. Just finger tighten the screws and make sure they can still move. We can tighten these screws after the lead screw is properly aligned on a straight path. We will do this later when we turn on the printer. Then, rotate the lead screw to screw it all the way down to the coupler and tighten it. Before we turn on the printer, we can use a ruler to measure the distance between the axis and the print bed of both sides, or a bubble level tool to check it. Do some adjustments by turning the coupler to make it as level as you can. Okay, everything looks good. We can now turn on the machine and home the printer. You should see that both Z stepper motors are moving together. We can apply some oil or grease, then move the Z axis to the top. We can check and make sure the lead screw is straight. Try to tighten it a little bit and move it up and down a few times to make sure it moves smoothly at the current position. If so, we can tighten these screws. 
To test if this upgrade is successful, I will print three calibration cubes. Place each of them on the left, middle, and right side of the print bed. We can then measure the dimension of them to make sure the dual Z axis can provide enough support so the print head won't drop like before. Here is the result. All cubes are identical and their dimensions are very accurate. Our printer now has a direct drive extruder and a dual Z axis, but most importantly, it works really well. That's it for this video. All information in this video is gathered from my experience with 3D printers, so if there's anything incorrect or that could be improved on, feel free to let me know in the comments so we can bring better videos to you in the future. You can do this upgrade to an Ender 3, CR10, or pretty much any You can do this upgrade to pretty much <laughs> Hi, I'm Aurora Lung from If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button to support Aurora Tech Channel. See you in the next video. Okay, we're done.